Today you're going to learn something very exciting when it comes to JavaScript, which is about objects. Now, JavaScript is actually what we call an object-oriented programming language, even though coming from another object-oriented programming besides JavaScript, you might think that JavaScript is very lazy about the way that it does it, but you need to know that this is a feature of JavaScript, so it's not a flaw the way that JavaScript likes to do it. So what exactly are objects inside JavaScript? Well, we can see it as a type of blueprint where we put together similar properties and methods inside an object in order to group together and organize our code in a much better way than using variables and functions. And even though you might not have noticed it, we did actually use objects in the previous episode in our properties and methods lesson, as well as in the previous project we created one episode ago. So I just really briefly want to talk about what exactly I mean when I say we've actually used objects in previous episodes. So as you can see in front of me here, do we have a variable called name set equal to a string called Daniel and underneath it I simply console log name dot length. Now the dot length is a built in property inside JavaScript, which we talked about in the properties methods episode, so this shouldn't be anything new. And when we talk about built in properties and methods, we're actually also talking about built in objects because when it comes to JavaScript you have a bunch of objects that are built into the JavaScript language that contains all these properties and methods we can use inside our code. So dot length is a property that belongs to the string global object that we have inside JavaScript. We also have a method called toString where we convert any sort of data to a string data type. That is also a JavaScript global object that has this method inside of it. So we have a bunch of these objects inside JavaScript and I will leave a link in the description where you can check out all the different objects we have inside JavaScript in case you want to see it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop talking about built-in objects inside JavaScript because it's only going to confuse even more. And instead, we're going to switch it over and start talking about how we can create our own objects inside JavaScript. Because hopefully after you have learned how to create one yourself, you're going to make a lot more sense about when I talked about built-in objects inside JavaScript. So as you can see in front of me here, I do have another example that I want to use in order to probably explain what exactly an object can do inside JavaScript. So as you can see, I did create a variable called name one equal to Daniel, I color one equal to blue, age one equal to 27. And that is just some basic information about a person, which in this case is me. At the bottom, I also created a function we can use in order to update the age at the end of the year if you want to. So what we have here is a bunch of variables and a function that all belong to sort of the same category. What we have here is a bunch of people with information about them. And as you can see, this very quickly becomes very messy because we have a bunch of variables and a lot of them are actually repeated because we have name one, two, and three, and so on. And if I were to create a hundred people, this would not be ideal if you had to create a hundred different instances of this specific information here. So this is going to be very confusing and time consuming to create without using objects. So what I want to do is I want to delete all of this. And instead, I'm going to create an object that has the exact same information inside of it. Now, just for now, we're going to create one object of one of these people. And then in the next episode, I'm going to show you how we can actually draw out the true power of objects and create something called constructors that's going to make it easier for us to create uh, many different people or many people with information inside of them inside our code here, just like I tried to do with variables. So the way we create an object is by first of all creating a variable. So we're going to say we have a let type variable that is called person. And I'm going to set it equal to a new object. Now what you're going to notice here is that when we use objects inside JavaScript, whether it being a built-in object that we want to create a new instance of, or a new object that we create ourselves, is that we always use the new keyword here. So when I want to create an object, I want to say new, and then the type of object I want to create afterwards. So in this case, just a regular object. So now that we created the object, we can go underneath here and we can assign values to this specific object called person. So what I can do is I can say we have a person dot name and set it equal to a string called Daniel. And this is how we assign values to an object. So if I also want to have the, what was it, the eye color, I can say we have person dot i color equal to blue and then we can also add the age so we can say person dot age is equal to 27 
Now, just to mention it, when we create variables and functions in the global scope of our file, you know, just by creating a variable, we call them variables and functions. But when we create variables and functions inside an object, we change the name to properties and methods. And knowing this, you're probably going to go like, whoa, and get like an epiphany or something. Because what that means is that the built-in properties and methods like dot length and dot two string are actually very similar to what we're doing here. They're just basically an object that has dot length and two string inside of it that we call on in order to do something with some of the information we have inside JavaScript. So if I want to go down here and I want to actually console log some of the information from this object, I can say console dot log parentheses and just simply refer to person dot name or person dot length. Uh, see what we're doing there? We're using global objects and I make sort of references to how they're similar to what we're doing here. So we can actually call on the properties and methods inside an object by simply calling on the object name and then saying which property or method we want to access from inside the property. And also just to show that we can create methods inside the objects here, I'm just going to create one. So we're going to say person dot update age is going to be equal to an anonymous function curly brackets and then inside the function we can do something like return plus plus by adding one to the person dot age which is when we refer to the person age inside the object here which is up here so now we simply have a method inside the object that we can refer to when we want to update the age inside what we have here so if i were to actually run this inside the browser and do something like console log console dot log and get the age so we're going to refer to person dot age then we would actually get 27 and then if we were to go below here and say i want to refer to the person dot update age method by saying parentheses and then again console log what we had there person age then it's going to update to 28 the next time because we just ran a method that we created ourselves that wasn't built into javascript which is kind of cool i think uh, in order to update the age of this person here so this is the long way of creating an object. Now we do have a short and simpler way to create objects inside our code. So I'm just going to leave what we have here and create it in the second way, which is the shorthand way by saying we have a let call person instead of equal to curly brackets. And then inside the curly brackets, we can just simply refer to the properties and then assign values to it. So I'm going to say we have name colon, a string called Daniel. Then I'm going to say comma afterwards because we're creating a small list here, just like if you had parentheses and would have to insert values. So you had one value, comma, the next value, comma, the next value, and then the last value is not going to have a comma, if that makes sense. So I'm going to say we have a second property called uh, eye color. Colon is going to be blue, comma, and then the next one is going to be the age is going to be 27. And then we can also create a method by saying we have an update age colon and then set it equal to a anonymous function parentheses curly brackets and then we can do the same thing in here we can simply return plus plus person dot age so even though we create the shorthand version of it we still need to refer to the data in the same way by saying we have the object name and then afterwards the property or the method name coming afterwards after a punctuation. So this is how we can create the shorthand for a object inside JavaScript. Now just to demonstrate this, if I were to go inside the console and create the object and run it, and then afterwards say I want to console.log and then console log person which is the name of the object, then you can see we do actually get the object down here. We get the name, eye color, age, and then we get the function inside of it. So we can actually extend it. And then you can see we have all the information in here, even the properties and the method. So we can actually see all the information here. So this is how we can create objects inside JavaScript. And again, like I said, this is how we can create one object. I did show you an example where I had a bunch of variables inside the code where we can have one person and a second person and a third person. And you might look at this and say, well, don't we need to create a new object for each person? So we would say this is person one. And then we need to create person two. 
and then change all the information inside of it and create the second object because that is not very short compared to what I just showed you using variables. So even though this might be a much better way of organizing all the information inside your JavaScript rather than creating all these variables, it's not really shorter than what we did with variables. So in the next episode, we're going to take objects a step further and create something called object constructors, which is a way for us to create a blueprint based off an object that we created in this episode and create a bunch of instances or a bunch of people based off that one blueprint, which is a much better way to do it rather than creating a bunch of objects or creating a bunch of variables that are actually going to be set equal to information based on a person. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned something about objects. If you didn't, then I do recommend you go back and watch it again because objects is very important to learn about when it comes to JavaScript. If you had trouble with the video, I do also have my lesson files that also describe objects in a very detailed way. So if you are willing to do it, you can go to my Patreon and get all the lesson files for this episode with notes and everything and examples in the lesson files. So uh, if that's the thing you want to do, then you can go and do that. Now in the next episode, we're going to talk about something called constructors, which is something that is a key feature when it comes to creating objects inside JavaScript. Constructors is going to really bring out the strength when it comes to using objects inside your programming. So uh, I do hope that you get to the next episode and get to play around with constructors. So I hope to see you in the next episode.